If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. testimony of Lucia, who was born in Croatia. And so I'd like to introduce Lucia. Welcome to the program, Lucia. Thank you, Richard. It's a pleasure to be here. It really is not a, only a pleasure. It's a, it's a joy to my heart to be able to interview you now and to welcome you because you have a most interesting testimony. Please begin your story, which is absolutely authentic, from Croatia, where you were born, and how it was growing up. Thank you, Richard. Well, I was born in Croatia, which is a beautiful country, and it is, um, I'd say, 99% Catholic. We are traditional Catholics, and there is nothing but the Catholic Church, so um, most people are raised in the Catholic tradition, regardless how serious they take it. and. Uh, my parents were not very orthodox Catholics, but um, we as kids uh, went every day to Sunday school and, sorry, every Sunday we went to Sunday school and we went to the Mass and neither my mother nor my father forced me. Um, but, uh, so I grew up with Catholicism and, um, but I also grew up with the Bible and I have to say this was by the grace of God because um, my grandmother, and she was probably a more uh, devout Catholic than my parents, uh, she actually bought uh, me a Bible for my first birthday. Uh, and it was a kid's Bible with illustration. And what I found very um, interesting and, um, and uh, kind of brings warmth, warmth to my heart as God's providence is that, well, this was communist Yugoslavia and the Bible was bright red, but it had a golden cross and the Jewish menorah, which I found quite amazing now uh, when, when I reflect on it. And my name is Lucia, which is light, and uh, menorah is really a Hebrew. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, the the light. Um, that, that is very interesting that your name means light. Yes. And uh, go on explaining your life then in Catholicism. And I presume you, you went through the sacraments and, and how, how, the, how, how the sacraments worked in your life, or did they work, or how was it? <laughs> well, <laughs> I can say straight away the sacraments didn't work at all. And But again, it's a... Uh, I find God's providence is just uh, marvelous because, yes, I went to the mass, I went to the confession, and I did uh, the uh, went to the confirmation, uh, but uh, nothing ever changed. I was still a sinner. I still uh, was uh, telling white lies to my parents and uh, having um, unholy thoughts, and uh, the the reason. And I was convicted of that because I, I remember as a young child hearing the Sermon on the Mountain when Christ said that even, for example, if you look at the woman lustfully, you already committed adultery in your heart. And so it's not just your, your uh, actions, but it's also your thoughts and your um, unlawful desires. And I, and I thought, my goodness, I, I am going to hell. I, I know I have all them and, and I can't prevent them. And, Confession doesn't get rid of them. <laughs> I can identify with that, Lucia, because in 1972 I had a serious accident where I nearly died when I was serving as a Catholic priest where I fell down 24 steps and I was taken to a hospital and I was unconscious for three days, three nights. And uh, when I regained consciousness, 
and was in a sanatorium recovering, I, I asked for a Bible and I began to see that these sacraments that I was giving to others and sacraments that I was receiving myself, like going to confession to another priest, that it didn't change my life. I knew I still was a sinner. And uh, it, was, um, it was by the grace of God that I began reading Ephesians chapter 1 and 2. And I saw that it's by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. Not of works. And uh, what I was doing was works. And I prayed and I prayed, and it was finally that the Lord showed me Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, you've been dead in trespass and sins. And I realized before the Lord that I was spiritually dead, and I cried out to him, that he would, <laughs> he would take a spiritually dead person, give me faith and activate it by grace because there's nothing I can do. And God in heaven became my loving father and he gave me peace. That was in September 1985, many, many years after the fall, but many years after the search I did all those many years. And by God's grace, I came to I came to new life in Christ. Anyway, it's your story we're talking about, Lucia, and continue on about how you went through the sacraments and then how what happened after that. Well, it's praise the Lord, Richard. First, and and yes, it's it's the Bible makes it emphatically clear that all our righteousness is as filthy rags. <laughs> it's it's worth nothing, uh, and. Um, Catholicism, at least in my own experience, was uh, very good in ingraining in my head the bad news. Yes. Um, I, no, one didn't, no one needed to tell me that I was a sinner. Um, but I didn't see in Catholicism the way out of damnation. And I sort of, during my life, accepted, I'm going to hell. I know I'm a sinner. Well, you're the, you're the first person I ever heard saying that, but I, I, I can understand how you felt that there was no way out and you were going to hell. I, I, I simply looked to, to, to go to heaven, you have to be like Jesus, and I knew I couldn't be like Jesus. <laughs> and, uh, but no one told me, no one told me that uh, Christ died for all our sins and that, um, and that it's, it's by God's grace uh, a fallen man can be saved. Uh, that only came later, and it didn't, um, that came when I um, moved countries. I, I went, uh, at 20 years of age, I moved to Australia to uh, study biochemistry because it was not a very, um, Croatia was already out of the war, but, um, but the economic situation was not very good and there was not many uh, prospects for young people like me. So I went to Australia and I've gone through the PhD and, and I had everything in life that one could possibly wish for. Well, praise God that that, that become a PhD in, in biochemistry, was it? In, in, uh, yes, it's biochemistry, but I will say... That, that, that is, that I know people who've gone into biochemistry it takes a lot of study and a lot of diligence before you can get a degree in biochemistry, but it's so valuable a degree because it's so needed in everyday life for, for people who have need of biochemistry. I know in my old age I've been really helped by a biochemist exceedingly abundantly, and if it wasn't for him, today I wouldn't be alive. <laughs> So anyway, you studied in one. Did you get you got your PhD? Yes, I got my PhD and I I got my first research job and and um, but I I will say uh, to everyone that that you know what does it profit for a man to gain the whole world and and lose himself and lose his soul? I lose his soul. Uh, there, um, there'll be many um, Nobel Prize winners in hell that knew all about science, but they didn't knew, know Christ. Um, but um, by the grace of God, I, I was one of his lost sheep, and, and um, it was he allowed me to fall into, into a pit, and I'd say a spiritual depression, because even though I had all in life, I came from a 
war devastated, economically devastated country into, into a rich Western world and I was earning a good, good living and I could waste my money. Yeah. <laughs> Not that you could, but I, <laughs> for the first time I had money for all my lusts and I, oh, I used it <laughs> for just for that money purpose. Money for all your lusts. <laughs> money for all. So you were, I, I don't like to ask the question, but it's necessary. You were a, a, a real out and out sinner then. Oh, I was. I was. I was. Um, every weekend, I'd be drinking and clubbing and and um, partying as as all many many unsaved young people do. And you know, I was fornicating. I was as worldly as you can get. I mean, Christ didn't come for the righteous; He came to save sinners like me. And I know that some of those parties that people go to are. Are wicked, and you say you were fornicating and doing all sort of drinking and all sort of things. And well, well, by God's grace, you come out of that. C c c um, can I go on too far in the future? Was that for many years or, or many years before you, you discovered what life is in Christ in the Bible? Well, it was about uh, eight to nine years ago, and even though, as I said, I had all I could wish for. Uh, I was very depressed and, and part of part of what contributed to that is because in science we are indoctrinated with uh, this fable of evolution. They call it a scientific fact, but it's it's pseudoscience. It's 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 a fable. Uh, I will say outright that um, it takes more faith to believe that everything came out of nothing than that everything was created by an all-powerful God in six days. But um, the evolutionary, uh, the secular tourist will say, oh, we don't have a religion, this is science. But it's not true. Evolution is an entire worldview. It, it gets rid of God. So if there is no God, there, is, there are no moral absolutes. I am my own law, or I, I am my own lawmaker. I can do whatever I want. But th then evolution also teaches, well, when you die, that's it. You just get recycled. And so, well, let us let us eat and drink and make the most out of this life. I, I never heard that. You, you can get recycled. <laughs> well, you get recycled. You become the 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 raw material out of which apparently your life arose. So that that on its own is absurd because other people can be made out of that raw material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I, I was asking myself all the time, you know, so I live this life and then I die and then that's it. And that's, is that the purpose of my existence? And uh, I mean, I, as I said, I was raised up with the Bible and I just, I was just saying to myself uh, so many nights where I couldn't fall asleep and I was having these thoughts and I said, there has to be more to life than this. And at that time, um, God sent providentially um, uh, to me some Christians who started witnessing to me and they just suggested well hey why don't you try and listen to some sermons uh, we'll send you the link and they sent me the link to this evangelical church and I started listening to one sermon a day and it's for the first time I heard the gospel yes you heard the gospel and how was it when you heard the gospel so after 30 years of my life, I heard the good news. Uh, for 30 years, I knew the bad news. And then uh, I finally heard that uh, the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin, and that Christ came to save sinners. And whoever receives him, uh, to them, he gives the power to become children of God, who are not born of flesh, nor of the will of men, but of the will of God. And uh, that if we are um, faithful and confess our sins, He is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Praise God, confess our sins directly to God. Confess directly to God, and, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ who forgives all our sins. So there's no man, there's no mediator between you and God. Exactly. Trusting in Christ Jesus, the only, the only mean, there is a mediator, Christ Jesus, and no other mediator. There's no other, there's no priest in the New Testament except the, the priesthood of all believers, which is the priesthood of praise. But it's, it is wonderful that you personally discovered that. And 
And you believed on it? And did you experience it in a new birth? I did, and I used all the words from my mouth because that scripture just came. There's no mediator between God and man, but the man Jesus Christ, because no, there's no priest, there's no Mary. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mary was a sinner just like every one of us. And saved by grace, praise saved God. Saved by grace. And uh, like, like you and I, by God's grace and praise God, she was a wonderful believer, but not on a par with God, not on par. no on a par with Christ Jesus. And yes, so I believed the gospel. I was like, I, I, I was just, um, I, I, my, my sentiment was, why didn't someone tell me this before? Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I, um, I simply uh, prayed the prayer. I, I talked to God. I said, God, I, I know I'm a sinner. I, and I, I. I do, I repent of all my sins. Uh, Lord, forgive me and give me of your spirit and give me a new heart because I do want to walk in your ways and I know I'm not able to. To and praise God and I would like, dear, dear listener, that you would listen to what Lucia said, that she understood that she was a sinner and she looked to Christ Jesus alone. And cried out to him for his grace and she was changed from being a sinner to having new life in Christ and dear listener that can be your story too and the reason why we make this video is so that you would hear the words of life and that you yourself if you are still a sinner that you would know Christ Jesus and if you are a born-again believer watching this program, please send the link to other people you know who are Catholics or others who are evangelicals but don't know the true message of grace. Please send the link to them so that they could hear the words of life. You've spoken the words of life, praise God, in your own testimony. We'll go on now with this new life that you have in Christ and how it was and what you're experiencing. Well, I wanted to just go backtrack when, when you mentioned how I understood that I was the sinner. And again, that, as you well know, Richard, could only be understood by the power of God and by the grace of God, because it's the Holy Spirit that convicts us and shows us our complete depravity, total depravity of men. And um, that is really important, because unless a man truly understands that he is he dead can. in trespasses, right. dead as a corpse. Yeah, unless you understand, unless you understand that you're spiritually dead, dear listener, you can never come to life in Christ. And it's the grace of God to show you. I, I, I already said in my testimony in 1985 how, how the Lord showed me that I was dead in trespasses and sins, Ephesians chapter uh, two, verse one. And uh, it's, it's, it's only if, if the Lord shows you, dear little, that you're dead in sins, that you can come to life in Christ. So it was, it's wonderful to hear you give the true gospel and the true basis that we start as sinners. <laughs> Christ Jesus came into the world, we're told in scriptures, to save sinners. And if you don't realize you're a sinner, you can never be saved. It's God's grace to show you're a sinner and to come to life in Christ. Yeah. So, so continue with your story then. Well, I never, I never uh, knew what was going to happen next because I wasn't, as I said, that was my first encounter with the evangelical church and the true gospel. So no one really told me about the new birth. But um, I, when I came to read the scriptures in Jeremiah 31, where God says that he would make a new covenant uh, with the people of Israel and that he would put his spirit in them and, and uh, give them a new heart and cause them to walk in his ways. I, when I read that, I thought, oh, this is what must, ha what must have what would happen to me because all of a sudden, um, after that prayer, I lost all the desire to go drinking and clubbing and continue with my lifestyle. Instead of that, I, I bought the Bible and I spent my entire weekends reading the Bible. 
and I was just devouring the Bible. I couldn't get uh, enough of it. Yeah, I know. I know what it is to, <laughs> to desire to read the Word of God and to to want to to live the Christian life to the full. And and also understanding when you when you read the Bible is such an eye opener because you see what a difference is Bible from Catholicism. Yeah, yes, yes. It's it's um, and and there cannot be, you know, if you, we have two systems that contradict each other, both cannot be simultaneously true. One has to be false, and I will take the inerrant word of God. <laughs> over men's tradition, because only God is infallible. Um, I think you brought up a really important thing, that it has to be God that shows you. And it's sad that some evangelical churches do not really have the true gospel. And I, I, I speak the truth in love. This is true, dear listener. Some evangelical churches trust that they made their decision to accept Christ into their heart. And I know the day I made my decision, and I've accepted Christ into your heart. If you read Ephesians chapter 1 and 2, you'll see that salvation is not in the human heart. It's not, it's, it's 42 times it mentions in that two chapters that it's in Christ. We are born again in Him. We're accepted in Him, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 accepted in him salvation is in Christ not in us and uh, later on Christ comes to sanctify us by his Holy Spirit and that's in us but salvation where it begins is in Christ this is a wonderful testimony and I ask you if you're evangelical and you're trusting your decision look to Christ because it's, it's, it's God's decision. Read Ephesians chapter 1, the first four verses, and you'll say that it's by grace. You say, you say it, it's, it's blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. You say that it's all the spiritual blessings are in Christ, including salvation, as it goes on. To, into, into verse 4. So it's by, it's in love. He predestinated us. He, he has called us. It's his, it's his decision, not your, our decision. It was his decision before the foundation of the world, as it says in those verses. Christ said to his disciples, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Yes, and he, said, he hit the nail on the he head. He hit the nail. He, <laughs> he destroyed the uh, false Arminian gospel in just that one sentence. Yes. And, and, and that Arminian gospel is false. And it's for you, if you are an Arminian Christian, a so-called Christian, cry out to God to show you that you're dead in sin still. And it's only by grace that you can live. Some evangelicals who have this false gospel talk about a carnal Christian. They say, well, I've made Christ Lord of my life, and later on I will make him, you know, I will, I will become more sanctified inside myself. But again, it's not inside you. It's all in Christ. And I pray that you would really listen to this testimony and what is of Scripture, because it's not just you see this testimony, it's she's quoting scripture, and that's the wonderful words that you've spoken are the Lord's own words. So go on then, Lucy. Well, it's any man who thinks that he has a will and a power to save himself has not learned of the Father. And Christ said, everyone who has learned from the Father comes to me. And he also said, no one can come to me unless the Father draws him. Amen, amen. No one, and because, and again, that's the same scripture in John where, where it says that whosoever received, whosoever received him, Christ, to him, he gave the power to become children of God, sons of God, who are not born of flesh, nor of the will of the man, but by the will of God. Yes, dear listener, listen to this because it's, it, it's looking to God as a father that he would truly save you. 
and when you cry out to him, like I did in 1985, for his grace, he gives it. He is gracious, loving Father, but it's for you to cry out to him, to give you his faith, the faith that comes from him and his grace to activate it, and he, you will come to new birth in Christ, and you will have a testimony similar to Lucia's, praise God. I think, Richard, a lot of confusion comes because people take scripture out of context and they also forget the wide context of the scripture, which is scripture can never be pitched against scripture. And some people will say, well, see in John 1, Christ said as many as receive him, received him. But then how can you receive Christ? You cannot receive Christ unless the Father draws you by the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. And, and I like to use that analogy that you are like a rock at the bottom of the ocean. And in as much as the rock is not able to bring itself up to the surface unless someone reaches out and takes it out, so are you. <laughs> And so are all of us who are unregenerate, dead in trespasses, dead as a corpse, unless God gives us faith to believe uh, by His grace, uh, none of us can be saved. I, I thank you that you say you to the listener, that you're talking directly to the listener. And please, dear listener, hear the words that Lucy is speaking because she's given direct quotations from Scripture, and the Scripture is life in Christ Jesus as the Father activates it for us. So continue now to how it was then and where you are now today. <laughs> well, just a, a final note, because again, I think it's really important. People think it's not important. You are causing a big ruckus out of these minor differences, but it's not, n these are not minor issues. Uh, I say Arminianism is a doctrine from hell because it makes man the, uh, the author of his own salvation, which is blasphemy. It says that there is something in, in man that he has a power to recognize what is good and he gives his life to, his life to Christ a result, as a result of that, which is blasphemy because, uh, again, Ephesians makes it emphatically clear that we are saved by the grace of God and, and through faith, which is the gift of God, and through faith in Christ alone, not of works, not of any works. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. Lest anyone should boast. As Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. It, it's, it's wonderful you said this, and this is utterly important for you, dear listener, and utterly important that you send the link of this video to others who need to hear it. And it will be. It's again the grace of God, and we thank God to have him, having made this program that it'll be used of God. And uh, we know of ourselves we can do no good thing, but we know this can be used of God. And I'm so thankful for, for your testimony. You're still a biochemist and, and uh, making a good living. And where are you living now, and what's your condition now, Lucia? Well, uh, God has shifted me quite <laughs> around the globe because from, from uh, far south, he has um, moved me far north, north. So now I live in Canada, in, in Vancouver, in British Columbia, and I work for University of British Columbia since 2010. That, that is interesting. And it was there that by email and, and uh, that I contacted you and that we have a Croatian web page to now, uh, if you see on our, on our BerlinBeacon.org, where you go there, you'll see the different languages, and one of them is Croatian. And I thank God that from Croatia, which is so embedded in Catholicism, we have some evangelical churches built up who have the true gospel, who understand grace. And I, I have been in contact with to pastors through you making con giving me their, their email addresses and we see the word going out in Croatia praise God by his grace and the word is going out to you dear listener today it's by grace you are saved through faith and that not of ourselves it is the gift of God cry out to God for that grace and what happened in Lucia's life can happen in your life 
and that you will give all the glory, praise, and worship to God because it's all of Him. Lucia, this has been wonderful, and I, I thank God for that we're in contact now by email and that we have this Croatian webpage. I'm going to ask you something very difficult, but you've been speaking directly to the listener. What is your final word to the listener, please, Lucia? Well, my final word would be to the Catholics. Um, we, we have been addressing the evangelicals, but my final word would be to the Catholics because um, uh, this is my background, and I know that many Catholics are so devout, but they are, and so sincere, but as Paul says for the Jews, that he has great compassion and understanding, but they have a zeal of God, but not according to truth, not according to Scripture. And, and so it is with the Catholics, and I would say, uh, the Catholic Church and the Catholic Catechisms are not the way <laughs> and the truth and the life, but Jesus Christ is and the Word of God. And I would urge every Catholic to read the Word of God and pray the Holy Spirit, pray to God to give them understanding and to uh, understand the difference between the two systems, um, because both one leads to hell and one leads to life. One, one leads to hell and the other leads to life. That is the exact, exact word of God and the exact testimony that you've given today. Lucy, it has been a, a joy talking to you, and uh, I pray that by God's grace you will continue to grow in grace and continue to give the word personally besides what you do on emails. Let's give the word personally in your daily life. I know when I go into a, a grocery store or a supermarket and I'm coming out, I always say to the checkout gal, it's usually a lady, maybe sometimes it's a man, uh, have you read your Bible today? And uh, sometimes people say to me, no, I haven't read my Bible, but I go to church. And I say, what church do you go to? And often, not, not always, often they say, the Catholic Church. And then I say, you have to start reading the Bible. And I tell them where to read. And I thank God that I've seen some fruit from that witnessing in everyday life. And Lucia, your, te your summary of your testimony, your final word has been wonderful and spoken in love. I thank you for, for being with us today. And dear listener, please hear the word of God and live because it is by grace you're saved through faith and that of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And Father in heaven, we give you the glory, the praise, the worship and the honor, now and forevermore. If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. Thank you. Hello, this is Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian Debater Ministries. I'm pleased to introduce to my audience a dear brother in the Lord, Richard Bennett, Director of Berean Beacon Ministries, an outreach to Roman Catholics. It is great to be here, Larry. For people that don't know you, you were a Roman Catholic priest for 22 years. Is that right? Please give us a short account of your life. Yes, I was a Catholic priest for 22 years. I was a Catholic altogether for 48 years, having grown up in Dublin, Ireland. I was trained uh, very early on in my education, in what we call secondary and elementary education, uh, by the Jesuits. And then I decided to become a Catholic priest, and I spent eight years uh, in preparation. It was a novitiate year, and then 
the six years to ordination when I was ordained a priest in Dublin, Ireland in 1963 and then one year in Rome, eight years in all. Then I spent uh, 21 years in uh, Trinidad West Indies as a parish priest carrying out the the work of a priest. I had the best academic training you could get finishing up in the city of Rome itself near the Vatican and I I really had a desire to bring P Catholics to uh, what we thought was a way of being right with God so that they could get to purgatory and then that they finally could get to heaven and I was great for doing penances and sacrifices and then I was very devout in Trinidad uh, uh, baptizing babies here in people's confessions and doing all the sacraments. It was in 1972 I had a very serious accident where I was three days unconscious after the serious accident and then after that time when I got out of the hospital and the sanatorium I began searching in the Bible for what is truth. It took me 14 years of comparing the Bible to Catholicism before I realized that I was dead in trespasses and sins and it was by grace alone that we are saved. I One night I got on the floor in my house and I cried out to God for faith and his grace to save a wretch like me dead in trespass and sins and he gloriously did that. It was about two months afterwards I very reluctantly left the Catholic Church because my prayer after I was right with God by biblical salvation was that I could really love Catholics and give them the real true gospel of grace that is grace alone, faith alone and in Christ alone. But then in prayer over those two months after I was saved, the Lord showed me that I could best serve him and love Catholics if I left actually the priesthood and the Catholic Church and reached out to Catholics nonetheless. And um, I, I did that. I left uh, the priesthood in 1985 and uh, reached the States in 1986 and uh, I, um, I just prayed and prayed that I would have a love for Catholics to reach out. I thank the Lord that after one year as a missionary in China I was able to start the ministry that I now have called BereanBeacon.org. It is to show Catholics the real truth of where salvation is in a person, not in any church, and it is by God's grace, not by any ritual that any church does. So this has been really wonderful. I've seen priests save. I saw two priests in Poland, you know, through our ministry. We have a Polish web page, besides many other languages, and of course in English. And I thank God that I have seen God's grace poured out, and that is my heart's desire, Larry that Catholics would know the truth and that evangelicals in this very false ecumenical age would see the differences. Uh, I have a very interesting article on the webpage. Uh, are Catholics Christians? And we've had tremendous response to that, evangelicals whose eyes have been opened in reading that article. So it's with love for Catholics and to show the truth of Christ Jesus, that God will be glorified and many, many souls saved particularly Catholics, to the glory of his name. Outstanding. That was a wonderful testimony, Richard. Uh, could you just real briefly tell us about, uh, you've written some books, and you've already mentioned your ministry, but what are these books you've written, and how can people find them? Yes, I have written or uh, edited, uh, written some and edited others, and uh, they have been amazing. I just thank God. Uh, our most well-known book is Far From Rome, Near to God, The Testimonies of 50 Converted Catholic Priests. Since 1994, that book has sold steadily across the world in English and in other languages. And uh, it's on the third edition now. And uh, the other book that has my heart really displayed and uh, my love for Catholics is the book I've written about Catholicism called Catholicism. East of Eden, Insights into Catholicism for the 21st Century. This book is uh, published by Banner of True Trust, like the uh, book of the 50 Testimonies of Former Priests. And um, 
I thank God for that because the Lord has used that book and it brought many Catholics to himself by that book. Uh, the other book that my heart was in, in editing, together with Mary Hertel, is a book called The Truth Set Us Free, 20 Former Nuns Tell Their Stories. And that book has been used mightily of the Lord as well. And I thank God for the, those women, most of whom are still alive and active in reaching out to Catholics themselves. And it is just a wonderful testimony of God's grace. And the the other book I've written is called On the Wings of Grace Alone. I've edited that, and that is just 30 ordinary Catholics and uh, what we call lay Catholics and how the Lord brought them to salvation. That is a, an amazing book too. How can you obtain these books? Well, go to our webpage, bereanbeacon.org, and just go to the folder on the left-hand side, Books, and when you click on that, it gives all the details of how you can get those books. Outstanding. Well, Richard, uh, we're going to go into uh, showing people your videos now here across uh, particularly our audience on YouTube. But uh, many people don't know that you and me go to the same church here in Austin, Texas. So it gives me a special opportunity to be around you a lot just so we can do ministry work. But anyway, I want to thank you for allowing us to post your videos uh, on the Internet through YouTube and other Internet servers. You praise God and may souls be saved and the Lord glorified. Amen and amen. Amen. <laughs>